Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel and to the series where I dissect TLC's Love in Translation, a multicultural dating show where no one speaks the same language yet everyone hopes to fall in love. We're starting off with some pretty good news. People did indeed manage to keep their hands, feet, and objects to themselves overnight. At least the ones that mattered did. Being one in the, in the middle of the elements really allowed us to tap into some deep intimacy. As if we needed a clip to tell us, this trip is super weird. But I'm happy to report that Dylan, Tulai, Airi, and Khalil behaved themselves. In fact, Khalil and Airi seem to have made the best use of their time by pulling an all-nighter and communicating through their translation devices until their bungalow's power went out. We talked about all sorts of things. You feel like you're in that place where they're willing to be vulnerable with you. It's an emotional and kind of spiritual way to get close. It was perfect. Khalil is really starting to throw me for a loop. One moment he's the perfect candidate, the next he's making baffling decisions, and now he's going back to being perfect? I don't know. It's very strange to me that somebody that was struggling so hard with the idea of emotional intimacy 24 hours later now seems to have it in the bag. Is this physical connection enough for me to kind of sacrifice that emotional aspect? I'm not really sure. I have two theories about this, one of which I'm going to get into now. Khalil has never had a relationship before. His lack of experience might explain why he vacillates between prioritizing physical intimacy and emotional connection. Generally speaking, both of those things are important. At the end of the day though, you can't build a healthy relationship based on physical attraction and sex. If Khalil would focus on building a foundation of trust, communication, and mutual respect with out expecting overnight results, that could improve his relationship with Aidy. Japanese culture and my opinions not to rush. If you rush, you make mistakes. I think it's good that nothing happened. I'm very pleased with Aidy's thought process. She had me a little scared when she was talking about potentially sleeping with Khalil. That's because Jennifer did it. Doesn't mean that I have to. I love the shade, Aidy. This is so good. <laughs> I don't want to regret anything. So we didn't have sex. If he can't control himself, he wasn't the type of man that I I am looking for. I am really digging the hard stances that these women are taking. I wish that I had this level of conviction when I was 20 or 25 years old. This is really refreshing to see. The couples pack up and go back to the villa where Dylan and Khalil are gonna have to turn around and go on some whole new dates with Jam and Jennifer. Trip and Lady are along for the ride too, but they're practically inconsequential in a good way. No drama means no updates. No podría estar en mejor lugar y con mejor compañía. This date's day activity was teaching the couples how to dance merengue. My absolute favorite Latin American music, my favorite Latin American dance, but this is not about me. We'll talk about that later. Merengue originated in the Dominican Republic, but there are iterations of it all throughout Latin America. So the women are familiar with this dance and very easily get into the groove. The men turned the merengue lesson into a grind session and I really did not need to see that. Now the rest of the episode focuses on these two couples and their date nights. So let's just fast forward to the most uncomfortable part of the evening and get it over with. I want to focus on building a better emotional connection. That's what we're lacking in. I almost feel bad for Dylan at this point. He seems to be coming at this date with the best intentions of getting to know Jam. But how well can you get to know someone who's hiding their true self? My baby! I finally have him with me. No ma'am, your baby is back in Mexico wondering why his mother disowned him on national television just so that she could bang a playboy. Remember, Jam has not been transparent about being eight years older than Dylan, nor have a son. I think tonight I have to tell him that I have a son. About freaking time. At the dinner, Jam leads off by asking Dylan when he's going to turn 22, which he picks up on right away. She finally admits her age, which doesn't sway him one way or another. Why would me knowing her age change anything? Well, when you're a parent, Dylan, it matters a lot, but you don't know that yet. You know who does? She's got long black hair, a Mexican passport, and her name is the same as the cousin of a sweet potato. I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you close with your family? My mom is like one of my best friends. Friends. Tell me about your ex-boyfriends. Dylan is tap dancing all over the topics of family and relationship. The amount of opportunities this woman is given. That he is spoon feeding her and setting her up in perfect conditions to tell him about her son, y'all. And what does she do? Para mí, la familia es lo más importante. I still don't know how to tell him that I have a son. With your mouth, you idiot. Esta señora es una desgraciada que no la aguanto. Jam is giving off major I'm the mom but the dad has full custody and I see him every other holiday vibes. 
can you imagine how her son is going to feel when he sees this? Embarrassing, manipulative, insecure, selfish behavior, and it is gross. But wait, it gets grosser. Te quiero. Comes through in the translation of I says I love you. No, it didn't come through as I love you. This woman said it with her whole chest and she meant it. It definitely hit me with like a small amount of excitement. Then it was like, wait, 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 what's going on here? Sir, I believe what's going on is a case of love bombing. Love bombing is a tactic used by some people to manipulate others into relationships or commitments. It involves showering someone with excessive affection, attention, and flattery, often very quickly. This can be overwhelming and confusing for the recipient who may feel pressured to reciprocate or commit. Te quiero. I wholeheartedly believe that Jam's sudden declaration of love without knowing him well is an attempt to manipulate his emotions and make him feel obligated to her. That way, perhaps he feels like he's falling in love with her too, which will prevent him from leaving when she finally drops the bomb on him that she has a son. It would be much harder for him to leave that romantic connection once he says, I love you back for fear of making her upset because he's a people pleaser. And if Yam would do all of this at the beginning of a connection, Lord knows how difficult it must be to get away from this woman in one whole piece. And Dylan would do well to keep asking questions until she cracks. Of course he doesn't do that. Even though he's freaked out, Dylan thinks his plan is working and that he is getting to know Yam on a much more intimate emotional level. It just feels so natural, everything with her. Which is why they have sex. Again, or not. Depends on who you ask, I guess. Dylan insists nothing happened. I can feel confident that I know that I kept my, my promise with Tulat. Everything in me is telling me that Dylan is the kind of person that would ask, well, what counts as sex? Oh, that's not part of my definition. So I didn't break my promise. I don't trust a word coming out of his mouth. I'm not being a hater when I say this. Khalil and Jennifer's interactions are so awkward. <laughs> you look great. I like the hair. Makes a pretty cat, though. <laughs> Maybe it was edited that way, but these silences are so long. Khalil is going in with a game plan, just like on their first date in episode two. He says he's going to use this time to try and get to know Jennifer really deeply. Only this time he's got a translator and he can get concrete answers. Jennifer reveals that when she was in her early 20s, I don't know what she means by that because she's 24, she got engaged to be married and broke it off just in time. She asks Khalil about his dating history and is shocked to find out that Yeah, never dated anybody. I don't know how to react. I've had many relationships. I'm less concerned about Khalil's lack of experience and more confused by the fact that somebody as manipulative as Jennifer wouldn't take advantage of the fact that she would be working with a blank slate and practically building her own boyfriend. I want to be his first and only girlfriend. And she's back. <laughs> In all seriousness, I do not understand Jennifer's initial reaction. At 25, never having a relationship because you decided to put your energies into other areas of personal development is rare, but I don't think it's as odd as she's making it out to be. This scenario could have been perfect. They could have moved together at a snail's pace, learning each other's languages, getting to know each other a little bit more before deciding to move into a relationship. If they hadn't put the cart before the horse. Eu fiz uma carta para você de seis páginas. Relax, y'all. It's six index cards. And it's very weird because at the end, she basically says, after we had sex, I woke up five times more in love with you. I'm sitting here watching this like, how can she look at this connection and think that it is a profound and beautiful connection that goes beyond mere attraction or infatuation and is built on respect, trust, empathy, and growing together? How? And I think I know why. In researching the concept of love in Latin America, I came across an article that I wanted to highlight in this video. Enrique Serna, one of Mexico's most celebrated living writers, had this to say about the topic and its representation in the arts. Well, it's the same every time because in Mexico and Latin America, you can't have love without passion. And this love includes ardent sexual desire. So I think in the most representative Mexican songs, we find this fervent, blood boiling passion of Latin America that is identified with the region. Thus, it is seen by the world as a characteristic of Latin America, for better or for worse. Public displays of affection, romantic gestures, and emphasis on emotion are often prioritized as true demonstrations of love. With two cases of this behavior in the same episode, I have to wonder if Jam and Jennifer's declarations of love are some perverse misinterpretation of the influences that they've read about or seen on the big screen. 
It's also quite possible that they're just very immature, but I couldn't ignore that potential connection. I want you to be able to observe how I act and I want to be able to observe you more. Too bad, so sad. We don't have time for that. This episode's not over, but it feels like the last piece of Khalil's analysis will go very well with the beginning of the next episode. I haven't watched it, but I just have this gut feeling it'll make more sense. Next week, we'll open up with my second theory about Khalil's behavior as the couples return to the house and prepare for the final episode. I speculated a lot, but I would love to hear what your thoughts are. Am I on the right track? Am I losing my mind? Both of those things are very possible. As we always say on our channel, with God, all things are possible. And I look forward to filling y'all in on episode 13. Oh my Lord, we have made it through the entire thing. This is insane. Next week. <laughs> Take care.